Hello and welcome to my diaspora journey series. <laughs> so I remember on this session, we normally bring different speakers to share their journey in diaspora with a lot of people immigrating into the UK in high numbers. It's only fair that you know what to expect or when you see certain things or certain people flourishing. It's only fair for you to have at least um, an understanding of how they get to, or how they got to where they are right now. So for those people that don't know me, my name is Abia Sonia. And today I've got with me a very, very, very special guest. You know, Valencia, my guests are special. We'll bring you the best. So welcome once again to my YouTube channel. I am just going to allow you to introduce yourself, Marcel. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Marcel Mbene. Um, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm also a project manager. I'm currently working. I've been living in the UK for, I think, about uh, six, seven years now. Um, started off my journey just as a typical student and then transitioning into work and then eventually working now and have um, developed over the years. So I'm a husband uh, to a wonderful wife and I have a wonderful mm -hmm. son who keeps me busy. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm happy to be here again just to share. It's always nice to discuss and to have a chat with you, Abia. Thank you so much, Master. That was um, a very succinct introduction. So today, the topic we are going to be diving into is transitioning from student status to settlement in diaspora. I know some people just want to come and study and then go back home, but more people want to come here, study and then settle. There are process to these things and how do we even go about it? So today, Masa is going to be talking more about this. Thank you for that beautiful introduction again. I would like to just quickly ask, um, how did you immigrate into the UK? And then what <laughs> route did you use? <laughs> um, and then some of the things I'm going to be saying here are particular to my journey. Things might have changed, yeah. but I think in principle, it's kind of like the same. Um, I started here as a student, just like many people, perhaps. I didn't come here as an experienced hire. Um, that was a few years back and um, started off as a student, did my master's. Um, completed my master's, then eventually got a job and then worked and went through the tier two route. I was sponsored by a company um, to, to do the job that I did. And then that was for about five years. And then before eventually applying for the ILR and then from the ILR, then eventually becoming a British citizen. So um, uh, I've just given you about a number of years in just one sentence, but I'm happy to dive into some of the details as we go. But my, my journey was just starting as a student with big dreams, um, leaving my country of birth, Nigeria, and you know, trying to make something of myself. And obviously just uh, the, the student visa route and then transitioning to the tier two and then from the tier two to the ILR and then ILR to citizenship. So that, that was my, my route. And I think a, a few people kind of go down that route as well. Right, okay. Yeah, you're very right, um, uh, Mr. Marcel, where you said you've just summarized it. So right. what we're trying to extract from you today is the process is, okay? okay? So some people call, I, I believe that instead of being reactive to things, mm -hmm. it's good to be proactive so that you know how to plan yourself. So you came as a student, you started your master's course. Talk us through how you were able to plan yourself and manage yourself as a student um, and what you did okay. and how long it took you to plan for it and things like that. So um, I would say definitely planning is very, 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 very important. Um, coming into a new environment is not the easiest of things. So you have to have that sort of openness to learn. And I think that was the first thing I just appreciated first, that I don't know anything. And whoever is going to help me, um, if you are out there, I'm going to find you. Um, so that was the idea that I had at the back of my mind to say, what's this place all about? I mean, I remember for the first three days of being in the country, my ears were ringing. I come from a very, very busy side of Lagos, very, very noisy. So just coming to a place where there was absolute silence, my ears were just hurting me. Like, is no one talking? Is no one saying hi to anyone? So that was a very huge culture shock for me. Um, but then going through that, I would say, I think I was quite clear about what I wanted. I needed to find a role. I knew that, okay, I wanted to come into this place. I wanted to do better for myself. Um, so what is the route um, to, to get a job? So I started speaking to people. I think one of the key things that I did was to join a community um, that was in church. 
um, because it's very, very easy for you to just do these things yourself. You have very big dreams, etc. But really, you need a community of people. People have all people have gone through the path that you're trying to go to. So for me, I was fairly aware that I'm not the first to ever go through this journey. So I had to find a community first. And that was even where I met a number of people, in, which is a mutual contact between myself and yourself. So it was all from church. And from there, hearing success stories of people haven't gotten their roles, people haven't moved on to PhD roles, and just having that cohort of uh, people that are in a similar stage to yourself as well. You know, even exchanging ideas to say, oh, I saw this stuff. Um, some people are perhaps doing similar courses. For me, I was identifying people that were doing similar courses, engineers in particular, that wanted to go into the engineering field. Um, I happened to have a leader in the church that was also a practicing engineer. So just speaking to him, how he became chartered, how was his journey? And in, in fact, his was even very interesting because he immigrated here as uh, on the age of 33 and started his undergraduate degree before then working his way up to then starting his own company and stuff. So I found that really, really inspiring to say, okay, if he can do it, I can do it as well. So that's one, the uh, community um, having that. I think secondly is just being clear on your goal. So I sort of was very clear that I wanted to, you know, work and look at the opportunity of doing so. And that helped put a lot of things into context. And I think I want to touch on that here, especially, especially for new immigrants um, I had to make a conscious decision to choose between you know, going for shifts and applying for jobs. So I think one particular thing I was looking for, obviously you need a, comp you need a company that will be able to sponsor you. So they have this shortage, um, this occupation list or something that shows all the uh, a register of all the UK companies that can sponsor. I mean, there's no point having a discussion with companies that wouldn't be able to sponsor you. So having that, I then shortlisted that. Um, first to say, okay, these are the companies that I'm sure can sponsor. The question is, how can I convince them to sponsor? They are two different things. So on that on that front, having um, had those um, a list, that document, I think that's still live at the moment. Then secondly, I then looked into like, what are the shortage occupation rules? So shortage of, of occupation have a kind of so short circuit. Obviously you have to, uh, it's something that is a gap within the industry. Uh, and they're trying to fail. So I'm kind of saying, okay, which ones have, um, do I have a close um, um, relationship with, something I can transition with my current um, study? And so I started to, that then broadened my mind to not just look at core disciplines. So for instance, like engineering, I started looking into like technology consulting, um, some of those um, fields that perhaps the barrier of entry is not too high and you can enter with a base uh, bachelor's degree. So I was looking at that. I even looked into recruitment uh, for companies. Um, those are adjacent. And then I looked into business, uh, some business related fields, project management as well. So those were um, career paths that sort of dovetailed out of my core uh, discipline. So I think, I think being open-minded also helped me to understand. So imagine if you have the list of all the companies that can sponsor, you have an open mind on all the roles that you feel that you can do. And then it's a matter of then um, going through each of the websites and trying to see if they have any sort of graduate opportunities. I remember I applied to quite a number of applications, writing cover letters, writing CVs, tailoring it and all that stuff. And, and it eventually proved to be to be correct. I remember many people were saying that uh, to get a job in the UK was very difficult, but you know, I had four. Mm -hmm. I think my search and I was obviously okay. just I have to choose which one I wanted so again it's not about what people tell you etc if you're ready to do the work and be strategic about it I think I mentioned something about substituting uh, shifts so I had a lot of shifts to do but I had to that clarity of your goal like I mentioned was do I want this how badly do I want this so I had to decide and cut down on some things because I know you'll be spending your energy on something. You've got studies, you've got the shifts, and then you have your future. So I was like, okay, can I take a step back, reduce the amount of shifts that I do, just so I can give time to what is most important. And then as soon as I get the role, I then transition back. That's exactly what happened. As soon as I had the first one, then I went back to doing stuff. And then people that were just focusing on shifts were now like, oh, you've gotten a job, really? How do I? And again, because the, it runs in cycles as well. So graduate schemes and all those things run in cycles. Perhaps they start in September, but believe me, they've already given jobs to people by January of that year. So that sort of 
thinking ahead, yes, um, assessment centers, interviews and all that were already happening. I started school in September, interviews and all that stuff were already happening in November. Assessment mm -hmm. days were already happening in December. And then Jan mm -hmm. offers were already been made. So by the time you are done with your studies by June, it's too late, They've already, it's, you're looking for the next cycle. So I think bear in mind what cycles are and try and do it um, much more strategically. And I think that helped me a lot. Uh, I think I've just added some detail on that first side, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah wow. You know, so that's just, that's just a lot to take in, you know. I can see a lot of intentionality in everything that you've just shared. Yep. You know, finding that community because it can be very, very, you can feel so isolated in this country. Mm -hmm. And sometimes because you are feeling isolated, you have seen people that get depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people that that just feel they can't think, they need to go back. Mm -hmm. But what you've done, you identify that I'm going to be lonely in this place. This mm -hmm. place is too quiet. You identify your community that have mutual values and belief system with you. That is very, very important because no, no, no point being in a place where their values is in disalignment with yours. Yes, it's really. not going to yield the the what you wanted, the positive impact. And then you talk about the sponsorship website. Do you still have the link and is it still active? I can definitely share that with you. I'll just as a Google search, Thank people you. that are real job seekers should know this already. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yes, wow, yes, wow. Yes, yes. Okay. I can share Please, that with you. if you don't if you don't mind, I will just put it in the description of, yeah, the, that's fine. of this that. video. Yeah, thank you. Um, you talk about said, sorry, that sorry? Uh, we said about that community. Uh, something just dropped now. I because we were applying as a group. It meant that whenever we get rejections, it turned from you feeling bad about rejections to you making fun of it. So imagine if one like we were we'll be together and someone would just start screaming from upstairs. It's like, oh, what happened? It's like they've done it again. I have another rejection. So how we went mm -hmm. from feeling bad about rejection to still applying and all that, and then celebrating rejections and just laughing at each other is something that I mm -hmm. feel was very remarkable for us. And so failure was something we became comfortable with. And all of us, most of them, all of us are all studying and working. All of us got jobs. Yeah. The process yeah. was not just everything we applied for, we got. But I, I look back at those times and say those were very good times because we made joy out of some of the things that perhaps if you were alone might have depressed you or made you feel sad. So I just wanted to say that that community thing really, really helped. I mean, we even had, um, if someone fails, we celebrate it with a meal. It was that bad. And we were having a lot. I think I broke a record for having four rejections in one minute. And no one topped that. No one topped that uh, stuff. Four four rejections in one minute, in the space of one minute, pa, 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 from the same company, because I had applied to like four companies. So I was like, if anybody can have that. <laughs> and we're just laughing. And we eat with it. I just enjoy it. So just enjoy the process. But you just need one. I always tell people, I'm just one person. I need one job. That's it. So if I apply to 100, I'm going to get 99 and still be okay. 99 wrong and one right, I'll still be okay. So that, that was the mindset at the time. <laughs> wow, it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, the way it's here, the people started celebrating. It's as if it's like, because I always tell people, you know, success can be a lousy teacher. Indeed. Success can make you complacent. Indeed. But failure will make you sit too tight. Indeed. Failure will make you think on how to create a hole in a wall. Indeed, indeed. So what you guys did was letting us to create the hole, you know, yeah. the doors, the windows in that wall. <laughs> and you guys were capturing <laughs> with the celebration. People were shivering away. <laughs> we were shivering away the failures. Like, okay, another one, boom, another one, boom. And before you know it, you have the door yeah. Yeah. in the wall that was shut against you. That is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was good fun. <laughs> oh wow, wow, wow! No, seriously, you know, they said everything is about perspective, the way you see things, mm -hmm. and the way you decide to interpret it. Mm -hmm. If you are reacting to things, you need to ask yourself, what is the meaning I'm attaching to this thing? Mm -hmm. The meaning that you attach to it as a collective that was just beautiful, mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's that was just amazing. <laughs> 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 you mentioned something about you know not just some people are so focused so okay fine i'm i'm a, I'm a teacher i'm a nurse 
I need to just focus on that. If you're a nurse, you didn't get a nursing job. What about looking for a job that you said dovetail around that nursing? Yeah. And then you find a way to enter into the NHS and then mm -hmm. later go for the, the bull's eye. Yes. But sometimes we are so focused and rigid. I love the fact when you said flexibility is very, very important in this journey. Mm -hmm. And when you have a flexible mindset, you have a growth mindset and everything is open-minded, then you have more creativity on how to apply to things. And that was so remarkable. So please, if you are listening to this, don't miss this vital point. It's talk about community. It's talk about working together in the community and being in the same place with people that I going for the same vision mm -hmm. and so that when the knockback come, you'll be able to hold on to each other and pull each other up together. Um, and also you talk about looking for things that are similar to your career, not just career alone. So you have more choices. And uh, you talk about CV and personal statements, make sure it's very, very succinct, is on point. You will see some CV and just like, oh, wow, you send this to a recruiter, they're never going to take you serious. Mm -hmm. So go and attend those things. If you're in uni, attend it. They have a lot of that free of charge. Um, Long-term goal, when you talk about not looking at the shifts, but you were looking at a career. So you were not looking at the short term goal of having enough money to sustain. Mm -hmm. You are looking at something that would take you forward in the long run. Mm -hmm. So this was why you were able to reduce your hours. I'm sure you tried to manage them, but you knew where you were going. Yes. And you wanted yeah. to focus on that. Because then again, if you put those shades job too much in your CV mm -hmm. and it's not related to your job, it can knock you off. Yes, yes. I think two points I'll just add. The first one is um, on your CV and stuff. I'm a firm believer, obviously, it's better to give than to receive. So I, that was the first thing actually I did before starting any shifts. I went to volunteer with, uh, I think, the British Heart Foundation or something, just once a week. It's uh, um, something very, very subtle, but I think it takes you out of your own thinking about yourself only. You've come into a new land, so into it. Yeah. You are trying to make a contribution. And I remember being on the counter and helping some uh, on the cashier and helping in the furniture and stuff. Just that thing, I put it also in my CV and I was asked that in an interview, yes. So it's it's you need to think different because if everyone is thinking a particular way, just think another way. And I think that that act of doing that helped me to, because again, it was in a part of the UK where the language was not easily understood. So it also helped me to acclimatize with the diction there and to just you know contribute as well. So I think, yeah, just want to say that if you can volunteer, if not for anything, one month, just put something into the system and let it come back to you later. I think it, it, it definitely helps, yeah. You see, this is another point again. It's not always about the money. Mm. They may not pay you for that job, but they can give you reference for that job. Yes. And there will be loads of experiences that is transferable yes. that you can then bring. Yes. And also when you said give back, it's so liberating to give. I know sometimes we want these pounds, but that goes along with they begin to see you as someone that is willing to give, not just take as well. Mm -hmm. Put in a very, very good light, you know, to yes. your recruiters and those people that are interviewing you. Thank you for that great point. So you talk about how you were able to build your network because that was supposed to be a question as well. You're just knocking my questions off. <laughs> So now you said you had four offers. Four. Yes. Okay, you had four rejections in one minute. Yes. And then you broke your own record again by having four <laughs> offers. Yes. Wow. Tell yes. us about that. How did you get there? Again, I think it's keeping an open mind and just exploring um, um, adjacent careers. So I got one as a core civil engineer, got another as a project manager, got another as a technology consultant, and got one as a recruiter. So that's to tell you that they, they, those were all different face sets that I had to, um, that I've applied and applied and applied, rejections upon rejections. And I think it's a numbers game, obviously not just numbers, but the quality. It's painful to rewrite a cover letter for a particular job or to tweak your CV. It's quite easy to just use the same CV and just fire it through. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's more like it's that painful process of, okay, what are these people looking for? Is this CV tailored to this? Whilst the easy thing is just to fire that CV, uh, I need to check it and get some items from the job profile and try and tweak my CV to suit that. It might be slower, and that's why the, the when the rejection comes, it's more painful because it's not like a, something you just spread and just 
applied to 100. These were things that you intentionally adapted, took some time to think, to read about the company, to write a cover letter. So when it comes back that you don't even get an interview, it can be very hurtful. So I'd say, but uh, but you know, small things done over time amounts to very huge um, inputs. So if you do it just small, just one a day, but intentional one a day or once a week or something, was better than just spreading whatever you can out there. I think yeah. I made that mistake at the start, but yeah, that sort of intentionality helps. Wow, you know, you've just dropped a gold, a golden nugget. <laughs> Now we've talked about CV. Let's 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 just you know unpick or unpack what you just said. I know you just said CV. You said tweak your CV. Mm -hmm. Tailor made. Just like you go to the shop, you look for your size. You don't pick all the clothes. You look for the size that mm -hmm. will suit your body shape. So this is what Mr. Marcel is telling you. Don't just spread your CV, one CV, one personal statement, everything. So in this job, you go and look for project manager, right? Yes. Look for the job descriptions. Yes. Look for the requirements. Mm -hmm. There are some that I said um, very necessary. There are some that will tell you um, not so. There, there are some words they use. Some and of them are and, um, yes, yes. Yes. You know, look for those terms. Desirable. Yes, valuable, desirable, required, all those words. Now, find a way to demonstrate that you have these skills. Mm -hmm. Not to say I'm very, very flexible. How are you flexible? <laughs> find a way, because all the jobs that you've done, find a way to demonstrate in those roles you have mm -hmm. done those things that you said you can do. Mm -hmm. So this is what he's saying. So you're applying for project manager. You have a cover letter. You have a CV that will that will go with that. You're applying for a civil engineer. You have another cover letter, and you have another. This you're applying for a recruiter. You have another cover letter based on these things. And like I was saying, this this takes time. I know. I've been through this route. Mm -hmm. Believe me, it takes time. Mm -hmm. I have CV, and now I even have name attached to it. CV <laughs> for this. Yes. CV yes. for that. Yes. CV yes. for this. I'm yes. not lying, but mm -hmm. it's just trying to make my previous role relevant mm -hmm. to what they're looking for. So that yes. when they see that CV, they say, oh, this must, Mr. Marcel can do this because mm -hmm. he's done this in XYZ. So we're not asking you to lie. We're telling you to tailor it to suit the requirement of the position that you're applying for. See, I'm telling you, this nugget you just dropped is massive because I've seen it over and over where people, you are you are maybe a nurse and you're applying for different roles yeah. and you're just using the same CV. You ain't going to work. You ain't going to yeah. get no call. Yes, yes. It's just, if we take our discussion now, say this discussion, we want to, well, let's say I wanted to use this to apply for um, let's say broadcasting or something or a crew member i'll be like i'm skilled at setting up lighting i'm skilled at you know joining the call understanding how to structure and have discussions and to set up questions that will be answered on there if i'm ap applying to a public administrator role i would say i know how to converse i have good conversational skills i can hold the topic we can discuss on questions it's the same thing it's just a different side of the coin. That's how it is. So it's not like you're lying. You're just emphasizing the parts of it that best suits that. So that's 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 a quick way of you know sort of adapting your your CV. Yeah, thank you very much. And in those volunteering role, I know that they do good training. You know, they may not pay you, but they give you good training because I volunteer in places and they gave me lovely training mm. that I was able to use the transferable skills in the role that I'm now applying for that they will potentially pay me. So in a way, it's like they've paid you in kind. <laughs> so not, in that uh, role in the British Heart Foundation, I then learned the currency of the UK. I was oh, always wow. confusing, like, the I didn't know 10 pence, 20 pence, 50p, one pound, yeah. I didn't know anything. So it was there when I had to give change at the cashier, I'll then be watching. <laughs> I was just clueless. <laughs> I'm just interacting with the money Help me to then understand, okay, this is the currency. That's how blank I was when I came in here. 
And so, you know, it's it's part of it. I was learning without what actually it was my willingness to want to give to this. You just you have to give to receive. It just that's how it works. And so, yeah. doing that, then along the way, I then learned about you know currency, etc., which which. Yeah. And also how to work with older people, you know, they just understand the law about health and safety, just looking at how they care for people access and they say, oh, that's not, tr that's not good because, so it was very new to me, very, very new, but yeah, I learned, I learned a lot. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Masa. So in the, the process of you giving, you were also receiving yes. in abundance as well. Yes. That's, that's just a beautiful thing about giving, because whoever is giving is the hand that is on top. Mm -hmm. and it's the one that is open. Those that I receive, it will just take yours, will always be at mm -hmm. the top. So that's a beautiful way of putting it. Yes. Right. Okay. You, I want to just ask you again, you know, after you, you, you got the sponsorship and everything, was it difficult for you to transition then, change your status to mm -hmm. a new, um, to a new, um, how would I say, a route to set, settlement? No, it's not stage. difficult at all if you're just transitioning from tier four to tier two it's like this so far the the companies are the ones that are going to do everything so you just submit your details to them they either give a specialist or do it themselves i think that time they were using something called a certificate of sponsorship i'm not sure if that's still the case now a cost number it's as quick as just a snap of a finger and uh, the process itself was okay but obviously the exact things having to provide all the documentation following up on the company because again it's your life that's here so you have to take it very 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 seriously if you have that offer and you know providing all the documents on time chasing up there was a lot of follow-ups on you know where are we with this that kind of thing and yeah chase ups but the actual physical process was nothing but the 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 interactions to get to that point of submitting, getting it, getting your BRP then sent back to you was 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 quite intense. But yeah, eventually you get there. Yeah, communication is very key. I'm just going to sit on that a bit. Um, some people think I've got a job. I've been offered a job. So you just relax. <laughs> you do relax. <laughs> if you don't hear anything, like you said, if you don't hear anything, find a contact that you know you can easily send email to back and forth. Mm -hmm. Whoever is looking for something, you should have the longer leg. Mm -hmm. So don't say, oh, they've they've offered me this job and yet I'm not hearing anything. What's happened? No. Mm -hmm. He said you have to follow it up back and forth. Where are you at right now? What do you need at this stage? What else should I bring? So that you also prepare yourself mm -hmm. on the things that you need to bring. So please, if you've got a job offer, that is not the time to start giving testimony. Wait. Make sure you finish the back and forth process because some companies are so meticulous. Mm. I know with the job that I used to do, we have to do a DBS, then we have to do some other um, things that they need to check to ensure that you don't have any criminal record. So if you are here, please, as a student or whichever way you came into this country, everything in this place is linked. So if you have done something that you're not supposed to done and you have a record that could impact things like these processes so they are very very meticulous so if there is anything any snag at all that could impact on the processes who are the people that you associate with where are you living if you are living in a place and you have some characters that are not very very good remember when you, you know when you're doing your your record for your what they call it now your what's it called now for record for to see if you are credible to, to, to borrow, to lend money to credit or something. Score, credit score. That's or, the one, credit yeah. score. You know, people that live with you in the same place, yeah. their names are linked, are connected yes. to you. Yes. yes. So I really urge you, if you are, if anybody you are staying together, be very, very careful because there are some people, their character is not very good in the sense that they might take a loan and they will just mm. leave. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's better you negotiate with the people if you have any problem like that, rather mm -hmm. than you move into another accommodation where they don't find you. Because mm -hmm. then the person in that accommodation that you're both living at the same time, you can potentially affect them. So be very, very careful. You might say, oh, um, this is not, if it's a job that has got nothing to do with finance, it's not linkable. I believe you, I agree. But when you are doing any job that has to do with finance, you have to be really, really careful. Mm. Because I used to have a place where we were doing money transfer mm. and they, they traced all my record. Wow. Everything about money, yeah. 
you know, when we're talking about the Western Union, they have to trace everything back. Mm -hmm. And they were calling and asking me questions about this. And mm -hmm. thank God everything came out clean. But mm -hmm. there are some jobs that you will be doing, might not be engineering, might not be teaching, may not mm -hmm. be nursing, it has to do with finances. Be very, very careful on how you operate anyways, irrespective of your career, because you might tend someone's someone's image or yours and in the process where they are doing this background check and mind the things you say online as well mm. because right now recruiters are going on social media so people that are very that have strong opinions be careful of the things you put out there in the social media be careful of the things that you write even when you take it down there are people that may have downloaded it be careful of the things that you're passionate about that might be seen as offensive or maybe too opinion, op opinionated. Be very, very careful about things like that. Because I've seen some profession where they dig back and there are certain things that come up and mm. you will just lose a job for mm. that. Imagine losing a job for that and it's too late then. So I don't know if you would like to speak, speak on that because I know I've experienced it and I was absolutely shocked. Yeah, I think obviously everything is linked. You still, if you want to apply for anything, they ask you for your address up until I think five years, three years, four years. So you're not getting around that and everything is all linked together. So I think I'll just echo what you've said that, you know, keep a clean sheet, especially if you're moving out. I think after being a student and stuff, make sure you sort out all the bills. Make sure that the gas, electrics and everything for that has been sorted out before going because I've had a few um, people that have just had a bill or some of them actually had the CCJ put on their credit record for an unclosed uh, bill that they weren't aware of. And especially because if you've registered with your, your uni address, because you've yeah. finished from school, they've shut down that email. So they've sent an email, especially with like reminders and all that to that old address as well as to the old email. So you have no sight of it. And before you realize it's gone down a route and you actually do owe that money. So I've had a few people that you know, literally had to get that record off of their credit for some accounts that they didn't close formally. So just confirm with your landlord that you have nothing tied to that and so you can move on because they can having those things on your records can harm your future uh, credit score. Yeah, thank you very much. And another thing that just came to my mind is no records to public fund. Mm. We are saying all these things because all of these things accumulate to if you are able to settle here or not. Mm -hmm. If you're not interested in settling here, then mm -hmm. it's, it's up to you, but it's not this place is not heaven or anything. Mm -hmm. But we're just saying this discussion is based on how to settle here when you're going through a student mm -hmm. route. So it's mm -hmm. very important that we are like these very important issues, like recourse, no recourse to public form. If you don't know what you're supposed to claim or not, if you type no recourse to public form, entitlement on Google, there are so many things that will come out that will tell you. And you can even fill a form and ask them. They will tell you, declare mm. your status and everything. They will reply you and let you know what you are entitled to or not. Because mm. if you go and take things that you're not entitled to, when you get to that final stage, <laughs> where you're trying to apply for things, uh -huh. you don't want any snag at all. You want a smooth sail as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so please don't take anything for granted. Mr. Marcel said before, he said the little things, the little things, it matters a lot. It Everything does. matters, you know. So please let's do well to take heed. And so we don't start thinking it's the village people that are after you. <laughs> Meanwhile, you are the one that is shooting yourself on the feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, is there anything you want to drop? Mr. Marcel, because you've sort of just gone through all my questions. And is there any final word or anything that you feel okay is important? I need yeah. to drop this before we wrap it up. Just, there's some, something I wrote down. So we've talked about being clear on the goal. Um, yes. Just be clear. Um, you really need to be clear what you want to. And it's going to be painful at times. So let's say you've got colleagues that are doing what you're not doing. You're not seeing any results yet. And they're buying the latest phone, the latest this and stuff. Just understand that you'd rather do the long, play the long game, and then when you eventually get what you need, because you need to understand what you need, what you want. Yes, you want the iPhone 15, but you need the job. So we prioritize things and wants, and then that then tempers you so that you can be clear. I'd say process. So at this time, people are quite lucky as well because they can get the two-year post visa and stuff like that. It never existed in our time, so we had to switch immediately or go back home. So, but I, I actually thank God for the constraints. That's what I wanted to say. One other thing I wanted to say, the constraints 
sort of forced us to be to think outside the box and to try and try different things so for instance and like i mentioned you look into certifications if you can so I, like i said one of the stuff i identified was project management but i didn't have any project management certification so whilst that mm -hmm. started reading um to get a certification on uh, prince 2 which i did at that time which i saw was uh, used in a lot of um, uk companies so in order to align myself i just went to do a certification as well in essence yeah. if i didn't have to find those jobs perhaps i wouldn't have done those certifications so mm -hmm. the constraint on there sort of forced me and other people to say okay how do we differentiate ourselves from the many people that perhaps we're applying for this job and so whilst we're doing that actually we're gaining we're getting better and because we're mm -hmm. getting an increasing in value then we're able to demonstrate that that as well so i think the, the process the process uh, can be very very positive it might be difficult um i wanted to say something about the people um your challenge was someone's challenge yesterday so okay. you'll be very 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 surprised it's, this thing is all about people if you know the right person they can change your perspective and then that thing that's insurmountable becomes what were you worrying about I remember uh, things like assessment days and stuff. And I was like, what does an assessment day look like? And I spoke to a guy who was in church who had just finished his. In fact, to even say one of the roles was someone else that failed an assessment day that was complaining to me before I then applied to the role and then got it. Oh, so, wow. Yes. So it kind of like he was like a forerunner that had gone. He didn't know what was happening. So he has done all mm. that. And then because we're all together, he was then like, oh, I, I could have done this. I could have done this better. And I'm like, oh, really? Can I apply? He was like, yeah, you can as well. And then he talked me through everything that had happened on the assessment day. So I was now better prepared to then go yes. for it and then secure the role. So no, obviously, we all settled and we got our different jobs and stuff. But it, yeah. it, I, could, I could be reading on Google and stuff about assessment day. Where I have someone that has just done it fresh, just one month prior to mine. And yeah. it's about it and it just made it a lot easier so everything is tied to people i think have someone to talk to someone to give you new mm -hmm. fresh perspective and you'd be surprised how much um that thing that you're considering a big mountain is actually nothing um yeah. and then lastly i wanted to say something beyond settlement so i know a lot of us are <laughs> a lot of us are like i want to stay i want to stay i want to and i've i've actually figured that if you are granted stay, you still will only do what you are capable of doing. So at this point, yeah. it might look like once I stay, all of my problems are going to go. I'll be able to do this and do that. But really, it's who you have become before you get to settlement. So for instance, I know people that say, I want to start a business. I want to do this. So why don't you look for ways? Are there online businesses you could do? How? Just think differently about what can you offer. I know many people that were doing their photocopies and in, in school. Some of them were, you know, selling, uh, buying and selling some things. Just doing something um, to 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 do that. So I'd say settlement. Nothing really changes. Yes, you have access to a lot more things, but really, it actually doesn't come to you. You still have to go after those things. So look at this route to settlement, not as something that oh, I have to do, but something that would build you up. Um, so that by the time you have just been, you've had constraint on constraint, challenge on challenge, and you've been finding your way through. In the process, you grow into a person that challenges and problems are now like okay, yet another one, let's solve it, rather than someone that just had it easy all through. And then when one small thing comes, you then, yeah, you then thrown off course. So I would say settlement is. Uh, see, ever since I've settled, nothing has changed. In fact, I thought I would grow one white hair, one play, but nothing. It's still the same thing. I'm not smarter because I said to I'm not less smart. It's what I've become that it still is. So it just means that if I was playing in a, if I was playing five by five on a football pitch, now I'm able to play 12, 11 by 11. But the, the the skills of a footballer that I would have developed playing five by five, five by side, yeah. is still the same skills I'm going to use in 11 11. It's not going yes. to make you a better player because you have a bigger field. So that's that pattern that, uh, in summary, the settlement is not the goal. You becoming better is the goal. And it's already happening. And you, you might not be yeah. aware. Thank you very much, Marcel. You know, when you gave different options, thinking outside the boss, business, even business, 
This <laughs> is you. It's not for the fence at it. I kid you not. Yes. Done that word t shirt still on it. <laughs> Business is not for the faint hearted. Because when they are talking about the, the 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 rules, the laws, then the cash flow and building the network, trying to do everything and just keeping afloat. Like he said, try and do other things and build yourself because whether you decide to do business, whether you decide to do career or even do both. You need to build your mindset. I love the mindset you and your friend were building when you were going through this process of being able to look at the face of a failed circumstances and laugh rather than cry. <laughs> that is so powerful. No, seriously. Thank yeah. you so much, Marcy. I'm going to hold on to that. Uh, <laughs> look at the face of fear and say, hey, okay, I'm going to laugh uh, okay. rather than Rather than feeling the stone, yeah, you yeah. put it down as a brick yeah. and you stepped on it. Yeah. Come on, on to the next challenge. <laughs> again, again, you put it down as a challenge. You stepped on it. And before you know it, you were on the skyscraper looking at it. Is this all you've got? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's celebrate it. I, I remember celebrating rejection emails. I will cook, I'll oh. cook up a soup to celebrate it. It's like I've done so, like celebrate. I'm serious. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm going to take this away from this interview. <laughs> like that's super rejection. Because you can't kill yourself. <laughs> you can't kill yourself. You've done the one you can do to celebrate it. It's it's happening. You're growing, you just don't realize it. Yes. You're but there's something else. I love the way you were building your mindset. There's something as you mentioned. You said the guy came, he didn't get his assessments. And then you ask him, can I apply? He said, yes. What did he do? Let's be nice to one another. He didn't hold the information and say, mm. hey, mm. you want to go and apply? Okay, now you go. I'm not telling you nothing. What did he do? He opened up to you that it's, it's a big reflection. Reflection is powerful. Mm. Mm. He reflected and he said, hmm, I could have done this better. And you, he was telling you, I could have done that better. And you see the beauty of it. You got the job. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's just a beautiful bond. I hope all of you are still in touch. Oh, because... yes, 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 yeah, yeah. And actually, because you helped about, one another. I was thinking about it, those were good days. It was happening, wow. but we didn't realize it. So another thing is you might be going through these challenges now, but these are the good days. These are where these are the friends' weddings you're going to attend. These are your best men. Yeah. This is it's it. It's not, you know, it's not anywhere in the future. Those ones you are struggling with now. Are going to be by your side when you go when you marry when you have your first kids your first your kids first year birthday those are the ones that will attend why because mm -hmm. life is happening you didn't realize it you were just so focused yes. on not getting what i want but this is where life is being built these are long-term partnerships and those jobs we've moved on from different jobs but what we got out of it was friendship and so you know enjoy the process mm -hmm. enjoy the process mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank, thank you. You, so much. Thank you know, you. build your mindset while you're thinking of settling. Mm. Build your mindset. Hmm. Money cannot build your mindset because things will come. Even when you settle down, you get married, you have children. Challenges never end. It's what builds us. It's what makes us better. Mm -hmm. So that mindset that you have, that growth mindset that you have, is what will help you. Look at the face of a challenge and laugh. I say, hey, give me pepper soup. Let me." <laughs> I still do it today. I still do it. it. Like you said, it's a mindset. It's something you celebrate. Yeah, we to adopt that mindset. Anyway, we are just going to enjoy it. the result. <laughs> is not going to determine our our happiness. We choose our happiness. We choose our joy. That is exactly what you've done. You chose yeah. your joy. That mm, the circumstances, the situation, will not be the determinant of my joy. I will mm -hmm. choose it and I will make it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I'm just going to quickly recap. So okay. you talk about community, build the right community. Also, look for the list, plan ahead. Because you think about that cycle. You mm -hmm. think, oh, I will apply when I finish my course. No. He said the process started maybe a year in mm -hmm. advance. So please do well to find out when the cycle of your um your trainee or whatever job you want to apply to. Different career routes, different processes. Find out what the eye starts and when it starts so you can be ready. And also he said, um, 
make sure you diversify your your career in, in terms of looking for things that are similar not just a fixed one look for things that are similar that you can actually still do um so you'll be open-minded about it talk about tailor making your cv and your personal statement very important and you talk about look at the long-term goal not just the now mm -hmm. if you look at the now alone you will make some choices that will not benefit you tomorrow or in the long run contribute to the society by volunteering some people it's just one hour a day mm -hmm. You can mm. still go to your work and make your pounds, mm. but just volunteer one hour at least somewhere in a charity. They're always looking for things. Mm. And remember, you also get something. And then you talk about the mindset. Build your mindset. Build your mindset because you need it to thrive and flourish in this world. And then your network as well with people with similar values, people with similar goals that will help you. And finally, you talk about certification. Make sure you do the relevant certification in whatever field or industry that you're working at. All these things will help you with your settlement. Build the right network. People will give information. Knowledge is power. But then again, if you do not take action with those information, it's as good as nothing. So make sure you don't procrastinate. Take action at the right time. Don't start looking for how to do your visa extension when it's getting closer. Mm -hmm. Plan ahead. Those pounds, put some aside mm -hmm. so that when it's time, you don't start looking around to borrow money mm -hmm. to process your stuff. Mm -hmm. Make sure you plan ahead. Plan, plan, plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Marcel. I Thank really you. do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really Thank enjoyed you. this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, my my love to the family. Yes. I really appreciate it. Let me go and drink some pepper soup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy catfish, particularly catfish. Uh, okay, catfish. I don't have catfish. I have to. I have to look for look for tomorrow. So, for those of you that have listened to this, I hope you are finding these sessions very, very inspiring. These are people that are sharing their story, being vulnerable with you. You can't get this on Google. You can't get this on the textbook. These are personal story they're special and if you know you've not subscribed to my channel what are you waiting for me i'm not begging please people should subscribe so that more people i really want these videos to meet more people to reach more people so that people can learn this vital information i might just transform a life without us even knowing it so do good do well to just share this video and like subscribe and if anything resonates with you with what mr marcel share today just drop it in the comment section thank you so so much and have a good day thank you yeah. Marcel. <laughs>